Hi, it's Monica with It's Just Sewing, and this is the Anatomy of the Sewing Machine. It's the first category in our basic sewing series, and I'm so happy that you're here. So the first thing I want to do is pretend that you have never even looked at a sewing machine. So if you have, don't be offended by this because a lot of people watching this have not. So I want to talk about the difference between sewing by hand and sewing on a sewing machine. First thing that is vastly different is that um, when you sew by hand, you typically have your needle and you have a one single line of thread, and that's how you sew by hand. When you're sewing with a sewing machine, you actually have a spool of thread that sits on top, and then you fill um, thread onto a bobbin, so you'll actually have two different threads that are weaving together and the bobbin goes into the bobbin casing down below they will find their way together down below which I'm going to show you in just a little while and they connect they interlocked constantly and that's what creates a stitch line so you have to have two different threads when you're working with a home sewing machine versus sewing by hand so that is the most important difference between hand sewing and sewing on a machine now this bobbin is not universal. There are bobbins that are specific to every single sewing machine. So the thing that you need to know is when you get a sewing machine, you're going to get four or five different bobbins for your machine and you want to keep those. You don't want to throw them away when they have thread on them. You actually want to take the thread off. It's not that much, I promise you. Um, take that off after sewing um, you know, a project and keep your bobbins because they are specific to your machine. And you, know, you can always go online and you can buy more bobbins that are specific for your type of machine but you can get into a lot of problems if you have the wrong bobbin for your machine so the very first thing that we're going to do when we start um, sewing is we wind thread onto a bobbin and I want to show you where the bobbin winder is now okay so let's get started Okay, so our bobbin winder can typically be found in the top portion off to the right of our sewing machine. And here is ours. So I'm gonna grab a bobbin that's specific for our machine and pop it right on there. Now what you wanna know about your, your bobbin winder is when it's time to wind the bobbin, you need to push your bobbin winder over into the right locked position. Now your machine intuitively knows it's time to wind the bobbin. And this is really important because with newer sewing machines, if it is in that locked position and you don't intend for your bobbin to be wound, your machine won't sew. Now this isn't true for every single machine, but if you're in a predicament where your machine isn't going up and down in sewing motion, it might be because your bobbin is still in the locked position. The other thing that's important about this area is you have this little stopper. And what that does is it actually helps to make sure that your bobbin doesn't overfill. And that is just a priceless little gadget over here. So what will happen is you'll be winding your bobbin and all of a sudden your thread line will be going super fast as it's winding and then it will start to skip or break in its consistency and then it'll full on stop. And that is your indication that your bobbin is full. So the next gadget that we're going to talk about on our sewing machine is actually the spool pin. And there's two different types of spool pins. You can find ones that are vertical and horizontal. And right now we're going to start by talking about our vertical spool pin. So it is typically found near the bobbin and it is often very small, but it can be lifted. So we're gonna go ahead and put our spool of thread right on there. And what's important to note is your spool actually runs more efficiently if it's going on there and the spool is spinning counterclockwise. So what I always suggest is put the spool of thread in front of you and go ahead and pull the thread. And if your spool is running counterclockwise, then that is in the better position. The other way to note is if your thread is running out the back, then you know that that is also running counterclockwise and it's just a more fluid motion for your uh, spool of thread. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the horizontal spool pin, and it looks just like this. So one thing you want to know is that it does not matter which way you put your thread on. Your thread can be going this way, or your thread can be going that way. It simply doesn't matter which way you put your um, spool of thread onto the spool pin. But what does matter is your spool pin stopper. So you'll get several different sizes of spool pin stoppers with your machine, and what you want to make sure is that you always have one that's larger than your spool of thread. And the reason for that is many spools of thread will have a little tiny nick in them. And as you're sewing along, 
your thread may get stuck in this little nick or little divot. And then if that happens, your sewing will totally stop because your thread can't move anymore. If you use a spool pin stopper that is bigger than your spool of thread, you avoid it getting stuck in that little nick. So we just want to put our spool of thread right on there and hug up our spool stopper. Don't hug it too tight. You want there to be a little bit of wiggle room and you're good to go. So there is a thread cutter on almost all new machines and it's typically located on the left side on what is called the arm of the sewing machine. And you'll find it sometimes underneath um, the arm or on the side just like ours is today. So there's a little tiny razor right here. And what's so cool about that besides the fact that you don't have to grab your scissors in between every single stitch line is as you take your fabric out along with the thread you are going to bring it around and cut your thread line. And there's always this extra bit of thread still running out the back because the, lo the location is about three to four inches from the needle. And you typically need three to four inches running out the back of your sewing machine of thread before you start a new stitch line. And then that way, when your needle goes down and plunges into the sewing machine, you will not lose the thread out of the eye of the needle. So it's in a perfect place. You really wanna use this handy dandy little gadget and get used to it because it is a lifesaver. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the hand wheel. And your hand wheel is located on the right side of your sewing machine. It's this big wheel. I want you to start great habits right away and start bringing that hand wheel towards you in this rotation. This is important because it's, first of all, a really hard habit to break. Now, if you're bringing your hand wheel towards you, what's happening over here is your needle is going up and down, but also your fabric will be manually sewn in a forward motion. And good things happen when they're going forward, bad things happen when they're going backwards. So this is really important to get into a good habit right away. So if you're sitting at your sewing machine, what I want you to do is I want you to actually try and bring your needle up to the highest point possible before it goes back down. This is what I lovingly call the sweet spot for the needle placement. All right, when your needle is at that highest point, what happens is the thread up above and the thread in the bobbin case totally mellow out and they come out when you take the fabric out really fluidly there's no resistance if you don't have that needle up to the highest point possible what can happen is you're meeting with a ton of resistance as you're pulling your fabric out and you could break a needle you could injure the fabric that you're working with and overall just get really frustrated with your sewing experience and that's ultimately what we're trying to avoid by starting off with really good habits so always make sure that that needle is at the highest point possible before you take your fabric out of the machine Okay, so now we're going to talk about the presser foot and the lever. The presser foot is located by the needle and right above the face plate, which is this area right here. And the lever is located in what is called the throat of the sewing machine. So here's our lever and here's our presser foot. Now the presser foot has two to three different positions depending on your sewing machine. It has the natural upright position which is at it's out right now and that's how you get your fabric in and then it's got the lower position providing pressure to your fabric and it on some machines it will have an additional hiked up manual hiked up position to bring the presser foot even higher for big lofty projects so they can fit underneath that presser foot so the presser foot is super important because, like I said, it provides pressure to your fabric, and this is really important. Most people will stop sewing at a certain point um, in their sewing experience for this number one reason. What will happen is they'll put their fabric in and they start to sew, but their fabric isn't moving and all of a sudden their needle gets jammed inside of the machine and they go to move the hand wheel the, and they can't get it to move. And when they finally get their fabric out and they turn it over, what they're gonna see on the back is like a mess of thread. And that is nothing more than not dropping the presser foot before you sew. And the reason why is the presser foot provides pressure to your fabric. So if the presser foot isn't down, your fabric's not going anywhere and your needle is going up and down and that's what causes a huge jam. So the presser foot and this noise 
is my favorite thing. You've got to always drop that presser foot before you can sew. Now one of the best features on a new sewing machine like these is that it actually will not let you sew unless the presser foot is dropped and that's going to save you mounds and mounds and mounds of worry and concern, um, especially if you're working with children. So it's an added feature. It's the number one thing that I would look for on a brand new sewing machine. But if you don't have it, now you know how important it is to drop your presser foot before you begin to sew. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the feed dogs and they're located underneath the presser foot. So if I lift up my presser foot, you're gonna be able to see that there are these little tiny almost look like teeth. And those are the feed dogs and they help move the fabric. So what'll happen is if I put my hand on my hand wheel, you will see that the feed dogs go almost in an elliptical motion. And they're kind of your fabric's little conveyor belt. So this is really important. And now you can probably see that if you don't have the presser foot down, your fabric won't be able to track through because it needs that pressure in order for it to move. Now, the other thing that's really important to know about your feed dogs is they will only go as fast as your foot pedal will allow it to go. And if you are trying to force the fabric out the back faster than the feed dogs want to go, what you can do is actually throw off what's called timing on your sewing machine. We don't see all of the other things that are going on inside of the sewing machine. So if we pull one thing like the feed dogs out of alignment, everything falls out of alignment and that can be very, very expensive to fix. So our job is to glide our fabric in a fluid motion in the same pace as the feed dogs are going. So if you can get into that rhythm, it's actually really mellow and really chill and you'll actually really enjoy your sewing experience. Okay, the last thing I want to discuss is the gas pedal. So the most important thing ergonomically, you want to make sure your machine is sitting right in front of you and your gas pedal is right underneath you. You want to make sure that your gas pedal has the lower part towards you and then it grades up as it moves away from you. And I know that seems silly, but a lot of times people won't realize that they've been sewing for a while and their machine is way far out and their gas pedal is way off to the side and they end up with a backache. And I don't want that to happen to you. The other thing that you need to know is that you totally dictate how fast your sewing machine is going to go based on the gas pedal. So you need to get total control over your gas and not have a lead foot right away. You want to get your speed not in a parking lot because we all know what happens in a parking lot when you're trying to learn to drive a car. You tend to overcorrect and that's what happens when you start sewing too. And also you don't get on the freeway because you can't control your car and the speed at the same time. So you want to find that middle portion where you're going fast enough that you can you know sew in a nice straight line and then slowly increase your speed as you go along. So those are the basics in terms of the anatomy of the sewing machine, I hope that you enjoyed this whole category. And the next thing we're gonna talk about is the thread tension. And I'll give you a hint. We're gonna be looking at the thread tension dial right here. So find yours and then head on over to that next video and I will see you there. Bye.